world of fun and fantasy and ever-changing views and computer terminology. Commodore Muse, are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Hi. I'm Graham and welcome back to the Commodore Cave. Today I'm going to show you a new computer I have. This is the Commodore CBM 610 as it was known in Europe and in the US it was called the B128-80. It had a short run of about a year. In 1984 Commodore did what Commodore do really well. They scrapped it and uh, sold off the computers at bargain basement prices. Today, uh, they believe there's probably something like 10,000 of these made, but the numbers are um, all over the place because Commodore never actually said how many they produced. I think the 610 is a very elegant computer. I love the look of it. And it's not hard to see that it is related to the 8032SK. These computers were known as the Porsche computers, designed by Porsche, which they weren't, but that doesn't matter. No, that, that ruined a good story. Uh, and when you compare it to the 4016, the square box, uh, I know which design I like. Um, of course, all those pets will work quite well with the 8050 floppy drive. And the bottom of the case just has some air vents and that's it. This was an unusual computer for the pet series because it's the only one that came out without a monitor. All the others had monitors built in. On the back of the machine we have a reset button, we've got the RS-232C interface, the video out, uh, there's a cassette port here which appears to be compatible with the 64, uh, however I've plugged a cassette into it and it doesn't work, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Over here we've got our model 610, uh, it's 240 volt which is rather handy because that's voltage coming out of our mains. Um, it's a PAL machine made in West Germany and serial number is 2784 so I know there are at least 2784 of these made. Here we've got a cartridge port which is rather interesting because the best of my knowledge no cartridges were ever produced for any of these computers. Um, we've got the audio, the power input, there's our IEE 4A8 interface, on off switch and fuse. I'll open the case and we'll have a look at what's under the bonnet. Here we have the uh, internal speaker, that's where the sound's coming out of. We have our 16 memory chips for the 128k of standard memory, but they've also put provision in there to add another 16 chips. So quite a simple matter to have this computer enhanced up to the full 256k, should be quite a nice. Um, adjustment. Um, a lot of the chips in this computer are shared with the Commodore 64 as well such as the PLA, the sound chip, the SID, uh, that produces three mono voices and we have the uh, 6526 CIA input output chip. Um, these are all common to the 64. One of the differences is the CPU which is a 6509 in this one and uh, that runs at double the speed of a 64 at 2 megahertz. It's got a 6545 graphics chip in it which produces 80 by 25 characters in a mono display and it uses the Petsky character set to produce graphics. So I'll switch it on and after a few seconds it'll take us to the Commodore prompt. Because this is basic we can pretty much run anything that's pure basic from the uh, Commodore machines. Uh, let's try, well let's try the first one on the menu. I'll select one, have a look at demo 80 column, loading ready and we'll list it and then we'll run it and we'll get an 80 column demo. I don't have this hooked up to the floppy drive, I'm using an ST reader instead. And that seems to be working okay. That's what's on the card. Slow it down if you want to read it. And I'm looking for Space Chase.
Right, this one needs to be B loaded into memory because it's running binary. Uh, I didn't write this, this came from Guru. That one. Sys1024 to start it. And we have Space Chase. This is a relatively recent program, written only the last couple of years. Commodore produced this model to update its aging pet series of computers. It was designed for the business market, um, but unfortunately the cost of it was very high to produce, uh, making it not really attractive to the home market, and it wasn't accepted by the business market either. It was competing with companies like IBM. It came out in England, it sold at a recommended retail price of £695, uh, quite a significant sum of money, particularly in 1983 currency. To make matters worse, the computer didn't have a lot of its own specific software, it wasn't IBM compatible and the business community didn't adopt it. Then as far as the home market went, it had a huge giant to compete with, the Commodore 64, and we know how that turned out. So, a white elephant? Yes, it's a white elephant. But it's a beautiful white elephant and it's a welcomed addition to the Commodore Cave. I'm very pleased to have it here. So that's my review of it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up or subscribe. And uh, till next time from the Commodore Cave, thanks for watching. Bye. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Cause the Commodore is keeping up with you.